Hello everyone, it is Nick here and welcome to another video. It's been nearly a year since my last video about installing the Pelican game panel, which is a fork of Pterodactyl. And since that last video, a lot has changed with the way you install Pelican, uh, how you use Pelican, like they completely changed the panel so it doesn't look like it's Pterodactyl anymore. Uh, they've done a UI update and things are just kind of different. So this video is practically going to be an updated version of my last video where we installed the Pelican panel and the Wings daemon using Cloudflare Zero Trust Tunnels. Now this kind of setup is not for everybody, let me just make that clear. Uh, there's different use cases, different reasons why you may want to use Zero Trust Tunnels. Me personally, uh, for handling traffic, I have a home lab here in my basement actually. And I typically use, well, I went from Nginx Proxy Manager for web stuff over to traffic. And really, I couldn't find a good way to set up Pelican um, using either of those tools. So that's one of the use cases as for why um, Zero Trust Tunnels is good to use. Uh, it's free through Cloudflare. And after my last video, I do want to mention that this is not um, an official way to install Pelican. Uh, they don't talk about doing it this way. They don't make any mention of Zero Trust Tunnels. And the reason I say that is because I've seen this video posted around in the Pelican Community Discord server. And there were a lot of issues with, you know, people asking about it and, you know, mods saying that, you know, they're not really here to support, you know, something that they don't even have in their own docs. Because, yes, while we are following the documentation to, you know, get the Wings daemon set up to get the web panel on um, the server itself, this isn't necessarily something that, you know, they make any mention of when using Cloudflare Zero Trust Tunnels. So all that I ask is that if you have any questions about, like, the specifically the, like, the tunnel, then go ahead and drop a comment down in the comment section below, or go ahead and add me on Discord at OKNick. Okay For the team over at Pelican isn't necessarily, like, meant to help you with something that's outside of their documentation. With all of that being said, let's go ahead to the Install tab. Uh, a lot of the same stuff as before, uh, just a lot of the same warning labels popping up. You must have some, or you should have some, basic familiarity with Linux before you proceed. I, unfortunately, still have minimal uh, familiarity with Linux, and I, it, this is just fine for me. Ubuntu 24.04 is still the recommended version of uh, Pelican. Uh, the documentation is written based off of it. So we're going to go ahead and install a Ubuntu 24.04 machine. So I'm using Proxmox. We're just going to create a new VM. We're just going to call it Pelican. Next, we're going to give it Ubuntu 24.04. All that is good. We're going to up this up to 64 gigs. You never know. Let it use six cores CPU. We're going to give it 16 gigs of RAM. This is all preference. And we're going to go ahead and create and start the VM. So we're going to go try or install Ubuntu. It's going to do all of its pre-installation stuff. And we are welcomed with the welcome screen. So we're going to continue in English, of course. We're not going to use the new installer. These are all pretty good, other than the fact that we are going to just test the mirror real quick. And everything looks good. This is just a virtual machine, so this is all fine and dandy. We're going to install the open SSH server. We're not going to worry about any of these additional packages. Once the installation completes, we can go ahead and reboot the system and we're going to allow it to boot back up. And now we can go ahead and log into our virtual machine. Personally, I like being logged into root. So we're going to go ahead and elevate up to root. And we're going to set a password because we're going to SSH into this here in a minute. Since I want to use my SSH client, we're going to go ahead and set that up in SSH, SSHD config. We're going to go down to permit root login, and we're just going to say yes. I'm going to go ahead and restart the SSH service. And now in my SSH client, MOBA X term specifically, I'm just going to create a new session. And you actually know what? We need to see uh, what the local IP of this machine is. It's 95 for me. And the remote host of this machine is 10.0.0.95. It's going to be different for you. Just make sure you get the IP of the machine. I'm going to go ahead and log into root. And in typical new install of Linux fashion, we're going to go ahead and apt update. As well as apt upgrade. Once everything is installed, we can go back to the documentation. And you're going to see that we uh, need PHP. They recommend PHP 8.4. Now... They removed the command for this, but my install did not come with uh, PHP 8.4 as something that I can install. You can see that by going to apt install PHP 8, and then if I hit tab, it's just going to PHP 8.3. Uh, this used to be a command on their documentation, but basically we're just going to need to add a PHP repository. Um, all the commands for this are listed in the description below. So this first command, we're just going to hit enter. 
enter as well. And now you can see we need to install PHP 8.4 with the following extensions. And that's going to be the second command uh, in the description of this video. We can just go ahead and paste that in here. We'll accept that. And PHP 8.4 and its extensions are going to install. Next, we're going to need to install our web server. We're going to use Nginx, or me personally, for this tutorial. And if you're wanting to use MySQL um, as the panel database, in this tutorial I'm using SQLite, which is what they recommend over at Pelican, then you're going to need to go ahead and install Maria or MySQL. But since I'm using SQLite, I'm going to go ahead and skip that, and we're going to create the directories and download files. So we're just going to copy this chunk of command and go ahead and paste. And then we're going to actually need to get the panel onto our server, so we're going to copy that and paste that as well. Now for this, we are going to install and use Composer, so we're just going to grab their command to install Composer, as well as the second one to actually run the installer. Now if it pops up with an alert saying that some of these dependencies are outdated, it didn't for me, but it may for you, just depending on when things get updated, don't run Composer update. Uh, that's just something they tell you, so we're not going to. So next is the web server configuration, and this is where things are kind of flip-flopped um, from the last video to now. Uh, originally, you would set up the panel, but first we're going to do the web server configuration because now everything's on the web installer, so we actually need the web server configured first. So before we actually do anything with the Nginx configurations, we're going to go ahead and make a directory in slash etc called certs. Because we're using zero trust tunnels, this is how we're going to have to do our certificates for the web. And we're going to go ahead and cd into that folder. And then you're going to use the third command listed in the description below. And it's going to generate both the private key and the full chain file. Once you do that, if we list the files in the directory, you should see they are both there. And now we're going to go ahead and continue to follow along with their documentation. We're going to remove the default website for Nginx. And now making sure HTTPS for HTTP secure is ticked. We're going to go ahead and copy their configuration for a Pelican website that we're just going to put in nano, etc, nginx, sites available, and we're just going to call it pelican.conf. Using all that we copied, we're going to go ahead and paste, and now we're going to have to change a couple things here in these brackets surrounding domain. You're going to set this to the machine IP, mine was .95, and the same goes for the 443 port, 10.0.0.95. Other than that, you're going to go ahead and scroll down to the certificate and the key for the certificate. We're going to set this to where we generated them in etc slash certs. Same with the private key. Now, if for whatever reason you didn't use PHP 8.4, you're just going to go down to this fast CGI pass and set the PHP version to 8.3 or 8.2, but we're going to keep it on 8.4. You can go ahead and exit and save. And now we can go ahead and enable the Nginx configuration by pasting that and restarting Nginx. So that configures the web server itself, but now we need to go ahead and do a couple things before we access the web installer. And we gotta go back to var www pelican, and we're gonna run the environment setup. Now this works a little bit differently because again, we're not setting up the panel uh, through the console, but we're still gonna run this, which generates an app key, which you do wanna back up, it's in the environment file. And then according to their docs, we're just going to set up these uh, permissions. We'll just go ahead and copy and paste these two basic commands. So now it says we can access the web installer. However, before we do that, we need to set up the Cloudflare tunnel. So on your Cloudflare account, you're going to go over to the sidebar, go to Zero Trust. And over here at Zero Trust on this sidebar, you're going to go to Networks, Tunnels, and we're going to add a tunnel. They have their warp tunnel in beta, but we're not going to be using that. We're just going to use the standard and recommended cloud flared. And we're going to name this tunnel. We're just going to name it Pelican. We can go ahead and save the tunnel. And we're going to go over here uh, for the operating system. We're just going to click on Docker. And before we can run the Docker container, we're going to go back to our SSH. And we're going to use the fourth command in the description below to install Docker itself. All right, once that's done, we're going to go ahead and copy. And we're just going to go ahead and run that. Make sure it boots up properly. Make sure you don't have any weird spooky errors that pop up. Everything here looks good. And you can see down in our connectors, it is connected. So that's good news. We're just going to control C out of this. You'll see, you know, failures and all that. Don't worry about those. We're going to go back to that command. And we're going to go to the very start here. After Docker run, we're going to do dash D. And then restart. Unless stopped. 
Uh, this is just going to run in the background and restart unless it stopped. And there we go. So now if we go back to our Cloudflare, you'll see that the connector is still here connected. We're not done yet. We're going to go next. And now we got to add the host name for the panel itself. So we're going to set the subdomain to Pelican. And then the main domain, I'm just going to set to my oknick.club okay domain. It's letting you know that it's going to create the DNS record for Pelican. And we're going to go uh, service, HTTPS. And this will be the local machine IP. So mine was 10.0.0.95. And then we can go to additional application settings. You're going to want to go to TLS. And it's important that you enable no TLS verify. After that, you can go to save tunnel. And as long as this shows is healthy, you should be all good to access the web installer. So you see it's located at domain slash installer. So we should be able to go to pelican.oknick.club slash installer, for example, in my case. And there we are. So it's just going to make sure that the prerequisites are followed. So the PHP version, it wants 8.2 or newer. We're fine on 8.4. Uh, all the extensions that they asked us to install are installed. And then the folder permissions are all set from that one uh, page on the documentation. We're going to go ahead and go next. App name and URL, we can keep those the same unless you want to change those. The admin user, we can go ahead and make our user. And we can go ahead and click next. Again, in this video, we're going to use defaults and recommended. So they recommend SQLite for the database driver. If you want to use MariaDB, MySQL, Postgres, you can go ahead and install both the client and the server. And we're just going to keep the database path as database.sqlite. Cache driver, we're going to keep as file system. And we're just going to keep the queue driver as database. And we're going to run these two commands listed below. Uh, it's important that www-data is your web server user if it is different because on some systems you can see that it might be different uh, just make sure that you're mindful of that and change that as necessary so we're going to go ahead and copy the first command paste it like so copy the second command and paste it like so you can just run through these three defaults and after that just acknowledge that you've done both steps click next and then the session driver will keep as file system and we can go ahead and click finish after a few seconds, it should bring you to the Welcome to Pelican admin page. So now we have the panel, we have the front end, now we need the back end wings daemon, we need our node. So we're going to go over to the sidebar here, click on nodes, new node, and the name here for the domain, I'm just going to do node.oknick.club for my use case. Your DNS record check should turn valid. Uh, since we are doing this over Cloudflare and it's secure, we're just going to keep this on HTTPS for SSL connections. For the node port, we're just going to keep this as 8080 for now. We are going to go back and change this here in a couple of minutes. It does say that if we're using Cloudflare, we can use 8443. Um, however, we're using Cloudflare in a little bit of a different way. We're making use of the zero trust tunnels. And for that, we're not going to do the whole 8443 thing. So we're going to click next. So here on advanced settings, uh, you got to be pretty lenient with the upload limit because one of the downsides with using the zero trust tunnel is you're not going to have access to SFTP um, like through the tunnel. Now the Pelican documentation does actually make note of this. You are unable to proxy the SFTP port through Cloudflare unless you have their enterprise plan, which I don't. So we're not going to worry about that right now, but we can go ahead and create node. So before we even get to adding allocations or servers to the node, let's go over to configuration file, copy their configuration file, and we're going to make dir slash etc slash pelican. And then we're going to go to nano etc pelican, and we're going to call this config.yml. We're just going to go ahead and paste what they had there for us. Uh, we do have to make a couple of changes here just for the certificate. We're going to set this to etc certs. That's where we ran that open SSL generation command. And as well for the private key, etc certs. So after that, we're going to go ahead and save and exit. So now we're going to actually install the wings daemon. We already installed Docker so we could do the Cloudflare. Um, but now we're going to copy this chunk of commands. And we're just going to paste it right into there. And now we can start the wings daemon by just running the start command. You'll notice if we go over to the nodes page, it still says that there's an error connecting to the node. So we got to go over to our tunnel again. We're going to go to edit and we're going to create another public host name. This one, we're going to call it what you call the domain name for the node. So mine was node.oknick.club. And then we're going to do the same thing with the service. We're going to go to HTTPS. URL is that machine IP 10.0.0.95. 
And you're also going to put the port here. So ours was 8080. We're going to go to additional application settings like before, TLS, and no TLS verify. After that, we're going to go ahead and click save hostname. And now we're going to go back into the nodes configuration, basic settings, and we're going to set this port to 443. We're going to go ahead and save. And now if we go back to the node, you'll see that the node is healthy and connected. Now that our node is up and running, we can go ahead and go back to edit. We can create an allocation. And we're going to select an IP address. It doesn't let you type one anymore. It just gives you the options of possible IPs that you can use, which is nice. You're going to set this to the machine IP. And we're not going to set an alias, but we're going to set the port as 25565. You can set an alias if you want. And now we're going to go to servers here on the left. New server. We're just going to call this test. It already selected the node and the owner for us. We're just going to set the allocation to the one that we have. We don't need an additional allocation, nor do we even have any. So we're just going to go ahead to the next step. We're going to set the egg to vanilla Minecraft for this tutorial. Everything looks good. It is on latest. We're just going to hit next step. You can change the resource limitations and advanced limitations if you'd like, but I'm not going to for the sake of this tutorial. We're going to create server. And now the server status is marked as installing. We can go ahead and peek at the console. And here's the really neat Pelican panel. I do like how it's different um, than Pterodactyl. Now the server will say that it crashed and it doesn't start up. It's because we need to agree to the EULA. Uh, I believe on Pterodactyl it would pop up with uh, a dialog saying, hey, like, do you want to accept the EULA? Here we're just going to click console again, files, ULA.txt, and we're just going to set this to true, save and close, go back to console, and then we can restart our server. And now that the server is marked as running, we can go ahead and copy this address and open our game. And we're just going to go ahead and connect to it locally and loading terrain and we're in. So there you have it. From this point forward, you can go ahead and port forward the IP, play with your friends, do what you need. But this tutorial covered how to get a server started up with the Pelican panel and Wings Daemon on a VM using Cloudflare Zero Trust Tunnels. If this tutorial happened to help you out, be sure to subscribe and leave a like if you haven't already. If you need any help, be sure to leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to assist. But that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hope you guys all enjoyed. I will see you in the next video, which hopefully is not 10 months later.